Hey, how's it going? I'm Nick and I'm your host on the Echo Academy podcast, a podcast dedicated to uncovering helpful tools and strategies to help elevate your career. On today's episode, we talk about how to gamify your life to achieve more in less time. My guest today is Conrad Lin. Conrad is the co-founder of Fintrux, who is passionate about building high-impact tech solutions to benefit the global community. His greatest joy is in empowering talented and goal-oriented teams to deliver extraordinary results in a short amount of time. If you want to find out more about Conrad, his work, and this episode, visit echo.academy forward slash Conrad. That's E-K-H-O dot A-C-A-D-E-M-Y forward slash C-O-N-R-A-D. So without further ado, here's my interview with Conrad Lin. Yeah, it's good. Well, okay. today's topic is really on how to gamify your life to achieve more in less time. Hmm. I know we're just diving right into it, you know, because <laughs> we're just going to keep it casual. But, you know, when you first introduced this to me, I, I was really taken aback because I thought this was such a such a great thing that I never once thought we could do, which was gamify our lives. So, before we even really get into this this topic of gamification in our lives, maybe Conrad, you could just tell us what is gamification. Yeah, thank you, Nick. Um, I think gamification is how it's an idea of how you can incentivize yourself to do the things that you want to do, and. Many, you know, mobile game companies take this way too far, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we've all gotten addicted to a mobile game or another where every single day you're logging in to get those rewards and, you know, you can't put the phone down because you're almost done that 10 win streak and all those things that games keep you engaged to play their silly little uh, animated, you know, bundle of fun. I started thinking about how you can implement that into your life and into your work. Right. If you could be so addicted to going on your phone and doing something quote unquote meaningless, right, but fun, don't get me wrong, how can we have that kind of same experience while doing things that you need to do in your life to achieve the goals that you want to achieve? And we all have so many things that we want to get done, right? Um and it's not an understatement to say that a lot of us are behind on those goals. So Really, the whole aspect of gamification came to me when I started to think, how can I really help you know, myself primarily and people in my company, my friends, my family, my communities, how can I help them impart this gamification into their own lives so that they can achieve much more in much less time? And I'm happy to talk a bit more about the principles of what gamification is as well. Yeah. It's 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 interesting that you brought up the analogy of um of of mobile games right as a as a gamification tool, but it brings up the 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 same point right because we become addicted to these games. Do you think gamification actually enables obsession? I think on some level you should be obsessed with your life. <laughs> and that's what I, that's actually one of the things I was you know trying to put across because we become obsessed with these things that don't actually put us further in what we want to achieve, right? Many a times I talk to people, you know, having a midlife crisis, right? Which is very unfortunate, but usually it comes about when you're, you know, decades into your career path, you realize that, hey, maybe you've hit a wall, right? Maybe there's a glass ceiling that you can't break through, or maybe it's just never something you wanted to do in the first place. And then you start imagining what could your life have been if 20 years ago you had an entirely different way of thinking, had entirely different mentors. So for me, I'm trying to tackle the problem before it gets that far. Um, I have a lot of friends who are in their mid-20s who are drastically lost in life. They just graduated, um, you know, a year or two into the workforce, and they really haven't figured out what they want to do, where they want to go, and most importantly, how they can get there. And But meanwhile, they're so familiar with gamification because it's penetrated every part of their life, right? 
they watch movies, they you know watch TV shows, they get hooked on you know uh, fantastic storylines, they uh, play games. These are all things that if you just tweak the formula a little bit and learn how it really applies, you can apply it anywhere. And imagine if you're obsessed with your life, if you're obsessed with making sure you're hitting that next benchmark, that next milestone, achieving those outcomes that you want to sell to achieve, how much more rich and how much more lively would your life be? And that's, a, that's something I want to impart. So in a way, if I could just reiterate and correct me if I'm wrong, gamification really helps you to obsess about the right things. Helps you obsess about the things you should be obsessing about. And okay. that's up to you to decide. I, I'm, not, I'm not controlling what you should be obsessing about. Yeah. But if you felt it was important enough to, have, to orientate your life around specific goals, mm-hmm. right, and characteristics, right, then I think yeah. why not work towards that? I was actually going to uh, disagree with you in, in some way because um, being obsessed almost has this connotation that you're taking life too seriously. But then I think to myself, like, what's a good example of someone who doesn't take life se- seriously? And to me, a great example would have been someone like Bob Marley. But then again, he was obsessed about just re- making living. good music, living exactly. good life. That's an obsession. Exactly. A session about not obsessing about life. <laughs> <laughs> Too meta, <laughs> yes, <laughs> but but it's true, and I think and I think you brought up such a great point. You know, we really should be obsessing about the things that really give our life meaning and and really refocusing. So perhaps a good way to, and I know you alluded to it a little bit, but if there's something you you missed out, it would be good as well. Why and how did you come up with the idea of really gamifying your personal life? You know, anything I try to share actually comes from experiences in my life. Um, and I, I want to go into two personal examples for me. And this really is meaningful to me because it's something that has touched my life in ways that I never imagined it would, right? And changed my life for the better, for sure. So the first example that I would like to give is that, you know, for myself, a lot of my life has been just doing what other people have told me to do, right? And I mean that in the most general sense. Like, if I wanted to get into good university, people said, you should do this, you should do that. If I wanted to get a good job, a good career, people said, you should do this, you should do that. So for me, I didn't really have that kind of conversation with myself about what did I really want to accomplish in this world until you know, I was in my early 20s. And this was after I had already set out on a plan to say, hey, you know, I had a, I had a grand feeling I wanted to help people. I didn't know exactly how, but I was like, okay, what's the profession that you can most easily help people in? Well, that was being a doctor, right? So I started on the medical track. And, you know, throughout my, throughout my studies, I just started always questioning, like, what is the best way to help? And what does help even really mean, right? And, and, and over time, I started realizing that I actually didn't have any concrete um, action plans to achieve what I wanted to achieve. I didn't incentivize myself enough to get to the place I wanted to get to, right? I had my own achievements here and there, but not necessarily for the purpose I wanted to achieve them for, meaning that I didn't have mindfulness and therefore the accomplishments I had felt hollow and empty, right? So in my early 20s, I decided yeah. that... Yeah, and yeah if, if, I, if I could interrupt you just to get to the heart of that. And this was this true for you even when you were in pursuing medicine? Did you feel like there was... You didn't feel that sense of purpose even though in a way you knew that was a good way to help people? Yeah, and I think like part of it, like I'm going on a small tangent here, but I had a fantastic teacher, a professor in university, um, and she she was someone that was also, uh, she got her MD, uh, and then she realized that helping in a one-on-one setting uh, with patients was meaningful, but not to her, because she always felt like she wanted to impact more than just, you know, 20 or so patients a day. She wanted to impact hundreds upon thousands upon millions. And that was her passion. 
And she didn't realize this until after she finished seven years of med school, yeah. right? So that was devastating to her. And she went into policy after that. And then after getting to policy, she realized that I actually can't do anything because as a junior in policymaking, all she can do is advise. And at the end, policy is decisions are made by people that don't actually have the right stakes in medicine, right? People that already have maybe privatized healthcare or they fly to America or, you know, anywhere else for their healthcare that they need. Right. And the policies that are supposed to be affecting the common individual are far and few in between. So, so what she imparted onto me was that it's really important to find out why you're doing what you're doing and what does it mean for you to achieve that goal. And for her, she realized a bit late in her career, but never too late, of course, but a bit late is that the things that she did and the outcomes that she wanted were not the same. So back to my point then, you know, um, in my early 20s, I realized that that needed to change for me. And I saw that there was a lot of different ways that I was getting caught up with the world. And as I mentioned, you know, games and all those kind of things. And I saw all the shady little practices that marketing companies like to, you know, use to incentivize you to buy their products, to uh, do something that they want you to do. And I'm like, <laughs> how can I do that for myself? Right. Right. And mind you, gamification is not a new topic. Everyone's been talking about that, you know, for a long time. Um, but I really wanted to find a way that I can make it universal and set concrete, actionable items that people can use, uh, frameworks, right? That people can use to implement into their own life. And that's really the, the path I went into there. And I also mentioned there was a second, um, a second uh, story I had to tell that um, is really, really personal to me. Um, and I think might be personal to a lot of people listening to this podcast as well. Nick. Um, and so I, I mentioned that I, t I talked to quite a few people who were in their midlife crisis, right? Um, I did some therapy work uh, back when I was in school and I had the pleasure of speaking to a lot of different people and hearing their problems and seeing how we could work together to resolve them. And one common thing I heard um, from I'd say a majority of them were, you know, moms that took a little break from the workforce to take care of their kids, right? But definitely not just limited to uh, women, but also men as well. That since taking such a long break and going back to the workforce, they didn't know what to put on their resume anymore. They didn't know what skills they had. And for me, a lot of the therapy was for them to find out what skill sets they really had and how they can empathize, empathize on that to make sure that their value is well known, not just to the employers, but to themselves as well. Because there's a lot right. of, it's a confidence loss, right, Nick? Of course, if, if yeah, you don't, yeah. If you don't know what you're good at and for so long, you've just been doing the same thing, taking care of the kids. And what a lot of people don't realize is even during that process, you pick up a lot of skills. Absolutely. Taking care of kids is not easy. I mean, I was a kid. I wasn't easier than taking <laughs> yeah. care of, right? Yeah, yeah, me so, too. <laughs> <laughs> I know how much of a handful we all are. Yeah. So, you know, huge love to the parents that raised us to be well and to be the loving and kind citizens of today. So one thing that kind of sparked my mind when you think about gamification is that within a game, you do certain things that build towards certain traits. For example, I'll just use a very basic example. Let's say in a game you have you can do very mundane things, and one thing you do is chopping wood, right? right? Then chopping wood would get you skills. You get strength, you get stronger from chopping wood, and you would also get a skill. You get better at chopping wood over time. Right. Right? And the good thing about a game is that it tracks everything. Everything is quantifiable. If you do wood cutting, you know, how many hours uh, a day, five days a week, Yeah, you get those points, you get those experience points. And sooner or later, you become 99, level 99 in wood cutting and yeah. you get whatever level strength. And those are things that you can show off, right? And games are really good at this is you can show off to your peers, you can show off to other game characters that, hey, I am good at this because I obviously have done the same things that the, the, the benchmark, the global benchmark of cutting wood, right? 
for how many times a day, for how long, however long. And now I have the credentials to yeah. showcase to you and everyone else that I'm strong and I'm good at woodcutting. And that's just a basic example. Yeah. But imagine that's applied to your life, right? Imagine that all the things you do, and again, I'll just use strength as an example, you weight lift, right? And many mm -hmm. times weightlifting, you can see the outputs, right? Uh, but when you're in that interim stage of weightlifting, you don't see output immediately. So you should be able to see that you're taking incremental steps towards progress. And the only way I see that happening is if you gamify that. If right. you actually keep track of all the times you're going to the gym, you're keeping track of the progression you're doing, yeah. right? Maybe one day you're benching you know, 100 pounds, the other day you're benching 120. Then you can realistically plot out how much your strength level, quote unquote, has increased over time. Yeah. And this idea can be applied in you know, having a good mindset and being good at finances and being good at any monetizable trait that you would need for a job. Yeah. And for me, that became like a guiding light because I really want to impart this wisdom, right? And of course, this framework onto people like that who are in, whether it's a midlife crisis or a quarter life crisis, know exactly what they have accomplished in their life because they can say, hey, I'm good at X because I have proven through all these years of working and doing X, Y, and Z, all these trait and experience points are going towards uh, this trait. And I know for a fact, and I can prove it, that I'm good at this, whether it be video editing, you know, recording, um, whether it be, uh, you know, anything that you possibly want to improve on in your life. Just imagine how nice would it be if you can see an entire list of things you've done that are servicing that trait. And right. That's where I'm going at. This will be interesting because let's let's dive into how exactly gamification works because I think you brought up a great example of of going to the gym and not really seeing results. But you also brought up the point where, you know, you're going to you technically it's it's in in some way it's gamification where you know if you go multiple times you measure that and if you carry a heavier weight you measure that as well but those those are technically goals right so how do you actually gamify it so that you know you actually feel addicted to that process feel obsessed about that process and really get to your ultimate goals so maybe we can talk about really how gamification works yeah nick and I think, you know, to start, I just want to talk about the theory behind gamification. Okay. So it's the idea that every action should be gamified with good behavior reliably rewarded and bad behaviors reliably disincentivized. And this usually can be achieved by introducing concepts found in gaming of experience points and gold rewards. And anybody who's had a child could tell you that they've had some part of this before right your yeah, kid does yeah. something wrong you have a punishment for them they do something right you give them a cookie i mean yeah. on the most basic level that is gamification but what i want to dive deep in is the concepts of what really are goals and what really are the tasks relating to the goals and stuff like that where i think not many people have enough clarity into how to organize that structure and i want to share how i think about it and maybe it'll help you so in your growth journey, usually you start with a goal, right? And yeah. it, it answers the question of why. Why are you doing this in the first place? So for example, you can have a goal to keep fit. Why are you doing anything relating to keeping fit? Because you want to keep fit, yeah. right? And then you have your results or your outcomes, which explains what. What does it mean for you to be fit, right? What does it mean for you to achieve your goal? And again, another example for that would be if you wanted to keep fit, then maybe a key result for you would be able to run 10 kilometers at a time, right? So you can prepare for your marathon. And then you have your how, right? How are you going to accomplish that? And generally, I like to think of it as you have multiple projects that service that key result. Right. Because not one thing is going to work for you, right? Maybe for you to be able to run that 10 km you need to not only have a running routine every week, right, or maybe three times a week, you might also want to eat healthier because you need to lose a little weight before you can have the stamina that you need to run. And maybe for someone else, it's different. Maybe they don't need the same projects because their metabolism is different than yours. Maybe their body framework is different than yours. And 
the whole idea about having multiple projects is once you find that something works for you, then you should keep it. If you find that something doesn't work for you, you should move on. So the how is is very experimental. The how is always experimental. I mean, you can always research, right? What does it take for you to run ten kilometers, right? right, right or what right. does it take for you to make a million dollars in sales, right? Let's <laughs> talk about business, right? Like all those things are ideas that other people have said that work for them. But you got to try out yourself to know if it works for you, right? And you got to think a bit of it in first principles to say, hey, what are the principles of what they did that made it work for them? And then what are the principles that I can apply into my life to make it work for me so I can achieve my goals and my outcome? For the listeners who don't know what first principles is, maybe you can explain what that is. First principles essentially is a way of thinking that it goes all the way back to Aristotle. Um, and it's, ba- it's, the, it's the idea that Every idea can be broken down so much that it becomes a core principle, a core concept, a first principle, right? That it can never be derived any further. And that should be the fundamental building blocks of your knowledge. Got it. And people like Elon Musk, uh, you know, also use this to conceptualize, you know, why does it take, um, why is nobody building an electric car? Well, people say batteries are expensive. Well, really? Let's break down the parts of a battery. How much does it cost? Well he realized that it costed actually a tenth of what everyone is saying. So therefore, there's a lot of middlemen and there's a lot of issues sourcing. sourcing. It's all about um, getting rid of the intermediaries. So everything about his approach is how can he build everything in-house? And then he does a lot of cost savings and now he has this amazing car company that's changing the world. And so that's the idea is that you shouldn't reason by analogy. You shouldn't think that just because it worked for someone else, it should work for you. You should understand why it worked for them, right? In what context would it work for you? Uh, in what uh, situation? Like, what did it have that's different from you that you should keep in mind before you blindly follow step by step what they did? Right. Um, so back to like the idea. So you have your goals, which answers the why. And how I like to think about it is, it's a huge win if you if you achieve your goal, right? Let's say you have you know three goals that you set for this quarter and. For the next quarter, you have five and whatever, so on. If you achieve any of those goals, that's huge, right? Yeah. And you should be very excited. And if you achieve any results, any key results, any outcomes, right, which actually define if the goal is complete or not, that's a pretty big win as well. And those are things that are already rewarded. Like the outcome is the reward. If yeah. you're able to make that million dollars in revenue, if you're able to run that 10KM, you feel happy. And ideally, these should be results that you're happy about, yeah. that you care about. But the most problematic of anything, any execution, is in the how. Because while you're experimenting, while you're struggling to get all those things done, you don't necessarily see the outcome immediately. And that can be very detrimental to your motivation. So part of my gamification theory is about how can you make sure that the task you're doing every single day actually reflects into actionable items that you're motivated by to do so what i like to do is that i assign gold values to it and experience points to your task and if i so i know that all the small things i'm doing every day for example a running exercise routine so that i can eventually achieve a 10 km run i'll reward myself for every time i do it right and that reward comes in the form of experience points i know i'm getting more endurance more cardio exercise from that so that's something I will know my points have increased there. Yeah. And of course, also having gold rewards. And the gold rewards for me is, you know, anything that you want to spend, you should spend. That isn't necessarily productive to your life, but useful for your well-being. So some examples would be, you know, having that 30 minutes of TV, right? Eating that yeah. ice cream cone or uh, having that snack that you really want that you should be budgeting for and you shouldn't have all the time, right? Yeah. So those are the things that, you know, it's bec- it's a reward because you've worked hard to do something that you know will eventually get you that outcome. But while you're doing it, it's tedious and boring and just plain old. You know, you just don't want to do it necessarily. Got it. And and just to just to really boil it down a little, or maybe to simplify it, because maybe gamification, um, especially to the listeners who are who are new to this concept, may not immediately understand it. Essentially, what you're doing is really to find a way to measure what was previously immeasurable or not measured. And then from there, 
also creating that reward point so that you know you are able to calculate the amount of things you can do that doesn't really benefit your goal but because you have like a, a set number of points you've already allocated for the things that you've achieved um, you're able to spend that so that you know you don't feel guilty yeah and, and the funny thing is nick like that i've realized about all this because i personally implemented this in my life and i'm only sharing this because it worked right yeah. um is that over time you actually don't want to spend your gold anymore and let me explain why it's because the reason why some things are more boring to you than other things is because you don't know the outcome you're not confirmed that the things that you're slaving away on so to speak every day are really going to achieve the outcomes you want but can after you an, can you give an example of that so that we can put that into context sure i mean let's say that in a job setting okay i uh, you are a middle level manager or maybe even just a marketing executive let's say marketing yeah. executive right uh, i think some of our viewers can align with that yeah and when you when you get a uh, order i guess from your boss saying <laughs> that hey you should write this press release you should start this advertising campaign you should write this pitch deck often you don't really know what the whole thing is all about and what you are trying to go towards so there's already one problem there, which is visibility, right? It's not clear to you how your work is helping everyone else in the organization. Yes. It's not clear whether or not the actual end outcome is the outcomes that you think they were trying to go for. And that's a big problem with many, many companies. And that's why communication breaks down. You have things like, you know, what managers like to say, this, you know, <laughs> disobedience subordinates. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's actually a symptom of a problem from the top because they right. haven't spent enough effort to educate everybody on what needs to be done. So the first rule of gamification to me is achieving visibility. And that by itself is already huge, right? right? Having the ability to see what you're doing actually works towards what, right? Hey, if you've done the pitch deck and if you've done the advertising campaign, you're actually helping your entire division earn $100,000 in sales this month. And why do we want to do that? Well, because the founder or the CEO wants us to be the best in XYZ industry, right? So now you all are aligned and you're all part of the same fabric that makes that company work. And that's the first level of it. And the second level of um, gamification is, you know, a lot of people think that sales is the only way you can easily get commissions and bonuses because it's quantifiable. Hey, you brought in $100,000 of revenue, hey, you should get a little bonus at the end of the year, right? Yeah. But doing it this way and actually having these small little tasks quantified and seeing like how much impact it really has. So let's say you had four team members that worked on this project and this project ended up being the project that actually got the company to get that $100,000 in sales. Well, therefore, everybody who worked on that project should be rewarded and proportionally based on how much effort everybody put into specific things that made that project work. And without a good gamification concept and framework around this, it's really impossible to have that kind of feedback and instance uh, return. And that's the way I see that uh, you can progress. And hopefully that's a good enough example for you it is, to yeah. think about. I, I also want to share about, you know... Um, I'm saying all this and it might be hard for you to visualize because, hey, are you, are you writing this out on paper? Are you yeah. using a spreadsheet uh, to manage this? I actually have built a framework uh, in, in a program, a productivity tool that I like to use. And I'm, I'm sure uh, we can talk, we can share the link later uh, yeah. uh, somehow in yeah, the description can, or something. Yeah. But uh, we can just say what it is now, right? Which is Notion. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a productivity tool called Notion. Uh, and it's really flexible for me to be able to codify and uh, input my own ideas of how any framework should happen and essentially give a downloadable, downloadable template for anybody who needs to uh, implement this in their life and also in their business. But if you want to implement it by yourself, like on a piece of paper, on your spreadsheet, on whatever other software you're using, I want to give you a few guidelines on how you can do it because I do want to say that it's tool agnostic. This is a framework for your life. This is a way that you can visualize and think about 
um, your life in a whole new way. And I don't want you to be limited by the tools that you have in front of you. So what's important is you should have scaling experience points and gold rewards for the size of the task, which rewards bigger wins. And that's really important because you don't want something that's going to take you 10 hours to do versus something that's going to take you one minute to do. Yeah. To have the same kind of outcome. You're never going to do a 10 hour thing. You're just right. going to do the one hour thing, right. uh, one minute thing. Additionally, you should have accumulating experience points to level up your character, which promotes progression. It's very demotivating if you're going to be level 10 today and level 10 tomorrow and level 10 yeah. the day after that. You want to see that you're leveling up, you're progressing in the world. And again, this is something that normally in a traditional business world, you only see that kind of level up maybe once every five years. You get a promotion maybe once every three to five years. And that's your benchmark. But yeah. what if you could be leveling up every week? Right. Yeah. What if you could have a way to quantify how much you're improving every week instead of every two years? And 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 Conrad, before we go on, perhaps while you while you go through these uh, principles and uh, ways to explain uh, the gamification process, maybe we can use one example as a way to explain the concepts that you're bringing forth. I think that would be helpful. Like even to me, like it would just help me understand uh, these uh, concepts a little bit better. Sure, of course. Um, so the next one I, I, I want to talk about is, you know, having positive multipliers for early completion yeah. and negative multipliers for late completion with promotes punctuality. Got it. And a way to explain that would be, you know, let's say you set up a task for yourself. Um, and uh, so I'm, I'm trying to be more diverse here. I'm going to give more examples. Some of them may be reasonable to you. Some of them may be not. You yeah. Know, but <laughs> let's say you're a content creator, right? And one of your goals as a content creator was to make a name for yourself in the productivity space. Right. And maybe one of your key results is to get 500, you know, listeners on your podcast. Yeah. And Perfect. Using, my, <laughs> using me as an example. Right. <laughs> then you would have a project that says, well, you're going to start doing maybe weekly uh, podcasts. You're going to find people that are going to be interesting to interview on your podcast you can have another project that's talking about marketing. How are you going to market this? How are you going to share it with your friends, with your family, with people in your community, right? What forums are you going to share it on? Stuff like that. And then you have your tasks, right? And let's say one of your tasks was to sign on someone interesting to come onto the podcast for this week. And one of your tasks for the marketing side was to infiltrate one new community so that you can share your message in there. Well, let's say that's your timing to do that was to do it by the end of this week because you have to release something by the end of this week to achieve your outcome, right? right? To get those 500 listeners. And if you miss that, well, that's a shame on you, but sometimes you don't get the punishment that's because it's your own little business, right? It's your yeah. own uh, creative project. There's no boss from above going to hand you the hammer and you know fire you if you don't achieve something by a certain time. Yeah. So for creatives, that's always been a problem. How can I make myself accountable for things that I said I should do for myself, right? And not just for creatives, even for things at home, right? Things that, you know, there's no boss looking over your shoulder, you sometimes slack off on. So being able to disincentivize yourself for being late on task by saying, hey, you know, you're on a streak right now, right? Nick, for the last seven days, you've been doing great. You've been achieving task after task after task just you know last week you finished your key results this week you can't miss it you miss it you're not you're gonna break your streak man yeah you're not gonna get that win anymore you're not gonna get as big of a win anymore so being able to be punctual is something that you can solve with gamification and again if you're a millennial and you used you know snapchat yeah. Right. You know how hard you try to keep those streaks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. And again, maybe this is relevant to some people. It's not to some. But as you start getting the 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 thing, uh, the the depths of this, you realize that you work harder than you think to try to keep up a um a virtual sense of like occurring results, so to speak. Got it. Okay. That's clear. So. Another thing I do want to say is that you should break down every task into 30-minute chunks and don't allow interruption, which promotes perseverance. Um, most people can only focus, like really focus, for 30 minutes at a time. And 
the best recommendation, this comes from the Pareto principle. Um, it's, a, it's a fantastic, fantastic concept. You should take a look for sure if you have the time to Google it. But the brief is that, you know, you should be taking your task into 25 minute chunks and spend the rest of those five minutes in that 30 minute period as a resting period. And then start it all over again in the next 30 minute chunk. Because uh, why this is important is because you don't focus as well if you're multitasking and if you're doing other stuff that uh, breaking, is breaking your concentration. Right. It's totally okay if you want to spend 30 minutes on one task, not complete it, and finish something else in the meantime and then come back. But always try to segment it into 25-minute chunks because that's the best way you can get things done. And the whole point of gamification, again, is to determine for each task, how many 30-minute chunks will it take you to finish? Do an estimate for yourself, right? And then you'll realize that you actually have a lot more time than you think. It's just that the things that you end up doing take up a lot of time because you spend half the time on Facebook yeah. or half the time Googling things that you shouldn't be Googling at the time. <laughs> That's the most relatable thing. <laughs> exactly. That's how we waste time. Yeah. So what I like to do is I like to set a timer on my desk and I have it set for 25 minutes and I just tap it when I want to get started on something specific. And I make sure that within that time period, I don't do anything else because it's so imperative for me to finish that item for me to move on with my day, achieve my outcomes and eventually achieve my goals. How do you maintain that discipline to, to focus solely on that 25 minutes without actually getting distracted? Because I think that's the biggest challenge that we all face, right? You know, we can set aside that 30 minute chunk. I think that's the easy part. Anyone can do that. But to be disciplined enough to stick to that goal for that 25 minutes and give yourself five minutes break. How do you, how do you do it? Okay. So this is an extremely interesting concept to me because it wasn't made obvious to me until I uh, observed it in practice in gaming. So in gaming, there's always these ideas of dailies, right? You have a daily login and when you log in, you have a streak. And if you complete your streak for five times, 10 times within this time period, you get a reward. And this reward is exclusive. You'll never get this reward again. Yeah. So people like go crazy trying to make sure that they log in every single day just to do that thing. And sometimes they have a time limit, they have a time lock, and they say, you need to do it for 30 minutes, right? You need to be logged in for 30 minutes. And people do it. So what got me thinking was that it's the limited edition novelty of it. And if you apply it to your life, you only have 24 hours in a day. And realistically, you're only awake for 12, right? And for those 12 hours, there's only certain things you can do that day that you can't do the next day. For example, you can't always put off certain tasks that you want to do without it eventually being irrelevant, right? If Nick puts off finding a new um, you know, podcaster uh, to come in and speak, then he's going to lose audience. He's yeah. going to lose traction. He's going to lose that once a week uh, content that he's promised his community. And that can be applied upon anything. So if you start thinking about it like that and you start framing your daily task into dailies and you know that if you don't do it today, you don't keep up your streak, the tomorrow's outcome is going to be much less than if you just did it today. Right. That's where I got my discipline from, Nick, because... I know that if I don't do today, I'll regret it for a long time because I'll lose all the progress. Or I may lose a lot of progress that I otherwise could have just kept. And that keeps me going. Yeah, that's, that is interesting because I think you, you, you've tapped on something that's, I think, very intrinsic with all of us. And that's the, the simple fact that while we, while we don't always have the discipline to, to stick to half an hour goals or, or to, to goals in general, we really feel the regret when things pile up and we just give up because it's just too overwhelming and we're like, you know what? Maybe I'm just gonna <laughs> have failed, you know? So that I think that's how we give up and I think that's a great way to really put it. I, th I think it's really fun to get to inbox zero, so to speak, right? Yeah. Like, How I'm, realistic is that, by the way? In, in very your, realistic, right? Yeah. Like, let's say that you set some things up for you to do, you know, maybe just three or four things. Start small, right? Yeah. Three or four things you want to do a day. And you start checking them off and you get to zero, which means you've done everything. 
you feel a very big endorphin boost, right? All your dopamine is flowing through your system and you feel good about yourself and you end the day happier. I think that's something that most people lack in their lives. Um, I know a lot of friends that at the end of the day, they just look at themselves and they say, hey, what did I really get done today? Yeah. I don't feel like I was productive, right? I don't feel like I got anything done. But with my framework, what I'm trying to set up is that you're actually counting your wins. These are small wins. These are wins that you should be happy about, right? And if you can see at the end of the day that you have done X, Y, and Z, your, your character has leveled up to whatever and you got some gold, and now there's a, there's a feeling of progression in your life that you may not have had before. And that's something that I want to impart on everyone is saying, hey, you know, you're actually winning a lot more than you think it, once you put your mind to it. Here, here's a framework for you to keep track of those wins. And here's gamification to help you maintain those wins. Yeah. Um, I think this 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 is a question on my mind. And I have a feeling that it will be a question on the listener's mind as well. And that is, does gamification make you make you feel more demoralized every time you fail at a task? So I'm a huge follower of Mark Rober, um, and he's a science YouTuber, very, very famous, very popular, millions of subscribers. And he has this TED Talk where he talks about the Super Mario effect. And it was inspiring to me because essentially the whole idea of this, uh, of his talk was that, you know, he he managed to gamify a... Um, a uh, coding project, right? Uh, he, sorry, he coded he coded a game, right? Uh, it's a very simple game, um, and essentially, people who were subscribed to his channel got to participate in that game. And he wanted to see what was the difference between different incentives that are provided for completing the game, and how many people actually went through and completed it all. And what he found out was that people actually, if you punish people for not um, doing a task, right? And they lose progression. That's something that they don't like, yeah. right? Punishing is not the way to gamify or incentivize someone to do well. That's why you see a lot of times parents, when they punish their kids, it's not necessarily going to be good for the kid. Yeah. And even more so for, let's say, uh, managers who take away bonuses if you don't uh, you know, get something done. So... What instead uh, is my take on the gamification is that you're not taking away from people. Like, I'm not going to deduct gold from you or deduct experience points if you don't do something. But I would say that you lose the momentum that you're going through with life. And you can think about that in Super Mario, right? You don't go back to stage one yeah. if you fail stage two. But you go back to the beginning of stage two. Right. Right? You don't lose the wins you've already done. But you know that because you stopped halfway, you haven't really complete, completed your goal yet and your yeah. outcomes haven't been realized and therefore you lose your momentum. And that's where I'll be going with this and why I say, hey, the punishment for not completing your goals is just you lose your streak. Yeah. But you know that you can build that streak up again yeah. because you've done it before. So an example of that is, let's say... Um, Let's use my post podcast as an example. I get a I get a guest on every week and I publish mm. every week. And because my as my streak gets as my streak gets larger and larger, instead of getting one experience point with each podcast, I start to get after I complete ten, the streak the streak allows me to get three experience points with each new podcast. Every ten. Ten times. Why yeah, not? ten times. Right. Yeah, exactly. Why not? Yeah. yeah. But the moment I break that streak, it goes back to one experience point per Correct. extra. Yeah. Got it. I would also add on that it makes intuitive sense. Let's say it wasn't about releasing a podcast. And let's say it's all about editing it, right? Mm. If you stick to a routine to edit, you know, every Saturday, I don't know when you do it normally, but you get better at it over time. You can realistically say you're a great audio editor right yeah. after you do maybe 10 times 20 times 30 times but if you take a break you might lose some of that skill new technologies come out yeah right 
And if you start again, it makes sense that your streak should start from zero. You don't lose your skill set, right? Don't yeah. get me wrong. Your skill set still stays there. But if you took a break for like, say, a month or two months, things may have changed. Yeah. Right? So it makes intuitive sense for you to um, break progression at that time period. So final question, because I want um, our listeners to really be able to implement it as soon as possible. Or at least try, attempt it, you know. Maybe you can gamify attempting <laughs> attempting <laughs> to gamify, but what can our listeners do or what are some of the best practices that we can do to implement gamification in our lives as soon as possible? I think the first step, which is very important, is to map out your goals. And this might be something that's obvious to you. I mean it sounded obvious to me, but I don't see enough people doing that, right? right? Not enough people actually say, hey, what are the goals I have set for myself that I'm going to hold myself accountable for? And what does it mean for me to achieve that goal? You can say anything you want. You can say, I want to be like, you know, uh, excel in my career. But you have to define that. What does it mean? Are you going to get a promotion this year? Are you looking for a salary increase for $2,000? Are you looking for, to increase your knowledge so you're going to take a course what does it mean for you to excel in your career you have to set really smart you know achievable um, and ambitious outcomes for yourself for you to be confident to say that hey i know what it means for me to be uh, excelling in that career and then after you do that you should probably plan out what you have to do to get there right do all the research you can Research how other people did it, right? Again, deriving the first principles, but see the, the fundamentals of how they got to where they got to and emulate their lives, right? And come up with projects that are reasonable to achieve that. And finally, then you think about the tasks that you have to do to make those projects happen. And something very interesting that I, I like to think about, like these are different mindsets you go through when you start planning these out. When you're planning out your goals and your results, you're essentially the founder, right? The founder of your life, founder of a company. You come in, you say, I want to be the best in this industry. What does it mean for us to be the best? We make a million dollars, right? And then you have your manager who gets that, bo- who gets that you know, order from the boss. Hey, we have to make a million dollars. What do we do? What do we do? What are the projects that we have to start? Well, I know we need sales. I know we need marketing. Uh, we might need an email campaign, you know? You start brainstorming all the different ways that you know could work, right? And you research how they worked, right? And then you say, okay, these are the things I should probably get started on and these are the timelines I should probably get started on them. And then finally, you have your project manager who's usually the domain expert, right? And this is you after you research everything. You know, hey, for me to have an effective sales campaign, for me to have an effective email campaign, I need X, Y, and Z. Yeah, I need to start a uh, you know start an account on whatever mailing service you want. I need to write a newsletter. I need to research the best practices of writing a newsletter. I need to start a content calendar. Blah 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 blah. Right, those are the things that you decide that needs to happen. And then throughout all this, you need to track it. You need to see, well, okay, I've done X, Y, and Z in my tasks. Has my outcome gotten closer? And if no. Scrap it, move on, try another project, right? And just keep on reiterating and re-experimenting until you find what you need to do to really get things done. So therefore, the founder mindset should be kind of thought about once every two weeks. A manager mindset should be thought about every week. And as a project manager, it's your day-to-day. You're in the trenches, man. You got yeah. to make sure that that's happening. Yeah. And you keep churning, you keep churning, you never stop churning. But while you're churning, Make sure you assign yourself small wins for every churn you do. Because like it or not, if you did your research well, those are good insights and good knowledge for you to develop your skill set no matter what. Yep. Even if it didn't help you for your outcome today, it's going to help you in something else tomorrow. And you can't forget that these are wins. Many people only think that their outcomes, their results, and their goals are wins. The things you do to get there are also wins, and you can't forget that. So that's something that I like to impart. And of course, I did mention that I have a template on how to do this. You can find that at gamify, that's G-A-M-I-F-Y dot conradlin.com. And that's where I have a suite of templates that help you apply this in your life, uh, also in your business. Uh, if you run a business, 
And I also talk more about this stuff on my website as well at conradlin.com. That's C-O-N-R-A-D-L-I-N dot com. And you also have a YouTube channel, right? How can they find you there? Yeah, it's just my name, uh, Conrad Lin. Uh, you can find me on there. So I um, I try to sp- spread messages like this um, as often as I, as I can. Um, and I recently also launched into a segment about being intentional, uh, how really having an intentional mindset about your goals, about you know the areas in life that you want to excel in, how that can help you achieve your goals and find more meaning in your life. Awesome. And I'll put all those stuff in the description of the podcast so it'll be easy enough to find you. And uh, to the listeners, if you have time, I would really recommend you check out Conrad's YouTube page. Um, um, I know the uh, topic on gamification was really well explained and sometimes it really helps with some visual aids so nothing like a YouTube channel to do that. Um, Conrad, it's been a real pleasure having you on the podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, no, thank you, Nick. And uh, you have a wonderful community and uh, hopefully they found value in my work. I'm pretty sure they did. Cheers. Cheers. Mm-hmm.